Hello everyone, I wanted to discuss with you automation really quickly. So all automation is, is it's something inside a DAW where you can draw in parameter changes and as the DAW plays, it will make those changes for you. So it's a great way to change volume within a track. Say you've got a synthesizer and you want to change a filter or you want to change a parameter in there, but you want it to actually evolve as the track goes on. It's a great way for that. You could perhaps, on a vocal line, if you've got um, a phrase and you want to bring the reverb in at the end of the vocal phrase, it's a great way of doing that. So it's a really good way of keeping the interest inside a composition and making changes and visually seeing what those changes are and how they change inside Cubase or your DAW. So let's have a look how automation looks. So if I expand this out, I've just imported a few samples and put some quick chords down on the piano roll. So here you can see, I've highlighted it here, here's our automation. It's these here, it's quite apparent because it's um, it's quite um, bright when it comes on. So we've got read automation and write automation. Whenever you put write automation on, read comes on automatically because it's reading what the information you've changed. You can also get any automation you've made by clicking these um, down the bottom left on any track you've got a little drop down if you click on there you'll see it just appears on anything and it will come up with automation now volume automation is the most common so this is what comes up um, as a default so can you see I've got read automation on here and what I've just written in is the volume actually increasing back down and back up now what I can do I'm going to write over this again to show you how this works, but I want to show you what automation looks like. We can use the lasso tool. Do you remember we've looked at this before where you left click before you get to the bit of information you want to change, hold down left click, make sure you've got the information covered and it all selects. So when these are darker, this means I can edit these by just deleting them. Now I've only got one automation lane there. I can get rid of that if I wanted to and start completely from scratch. Now, the, if we're going to draw in, say we've got this drum and we want to draw in a volume change, I can right click, get the line tool, or you can use the numeric keypad to get the, um, the line tool, or um, any way you want to get hold of that. So we can get the line tool, we can get the pencil tool, so we can draw that in. So say we want the line tool, and say we're going to go, um, we want just the volume to ramp up, I can actually drag this anywhere on the automation line, so I'm going to start low and increase the volume, and can you see here our automation increases. Now I haven't got snap on, so remember J, the shortcut for that, if I wanted snap on, so if I put that on, this will automate to an, the nearest bar, but without snap on, so if now I've taken snap off, I can use any automation point here. So that snap tool can be quite useful if you know you just want a one bar fade in. With that snap on, so sorry, I haven't got it on, so press J, you see the snap appears. I've got that set to a bar, and that ramps up for the first bar. Now if I control Z that, what I want to show you as well is how to write this automation in, so manually write it in, and if you've seen any old the old mixing desks or in pro studios when all those mixers um, the faders are flying about that's um, flying faders or ghost faders but it's the same principle as we're going to look at today so what I'm going to do I'll get rid of this automation lane by you know before to expand out so we could see it to write it in we went to the bottom left I'm just going to go to the top left on the automation lane and just get rid of it okay Say I'm going to write in here, I'm just going to put read and write on, and what I want to do, I'm just going to bring the volume up manually as I as I go, with it with the track playing, and you'll see it will create an automation lane for me. So, okay, so as I wrote that in, I had read and write on, I dragged the volume up as I went, and you can see it's made an automation lane. What I'm going to do really quickly at the end is show you how you can change the number of these um, points, the editable points. Say we've got this, and you know 
this section here between these two edit points you can actually a little um, circle up here and these can all be edited as well so you can put, change the curve in between edit, edit points or um, automation points which is quite useful so that's you know that can be quite handy so that's it working for um, volume it doesn't have to be volume it could be anything so if I go to the mixer I'm going to keep read right on so I'm going to press F3 for the mixer can you see how I've got my panning tool I might want to pan this from left to right so let me just I'm just going to switch this drum on now and show you what I did with the volume So that's our volume going and you can see here I've panned it to the right hand side mixer but what I'm going to do I'm going to do F3 just to show you we've got the read write still on you've got it here as well the panner so and what I'm going to do I'm going to start at the right and then I'm going to edit very quickly to the left it's only a bar long so I better be quite quick so oh, let me, oh of course we've got the volume automation that's why it's not coming across okay Okay, now if I come out of here, well, one thing I could do is start it and you'll see that's the automation I've changed. Now, if I take right off now and just leave read on, let me make this a bit bigger. So I'm going to minimize that down. Remember, Z is a quick way of just expanding lanes if you want to, or you can use the just move it around like this, like so. So that was my panning. And if I wanted to make that a smoother panning um, from left to right, I can use that same lasso tool. So drag over it with left click, make sure I've got the ones I want to change, and then um, hit delete. And there you go, you've got a straight, a straight line then. If I show you this on a synth, and then also how to get really quickly, how to get um, change the amount of editable points in automation, I think would be quite useful. And then it's a case of experimenting with it then. So what I'm going to do is just put Pad Shop on. So I've only got this one soloed now. I'll go to my edit window. And after all I've done is drawn in some MIDI information. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use automation to change this cutoff filter. Automation can change anything in here, any parameter, but this is one I've just chosen. So here's our read write. So it's a case of whatever effect you're in, whatever instrument you're in, look out for that read write, that R and W for the automation. So I've put R on and you can see it's made my it's made my cutoff for me. It's, it's made the edit point the um, automation points so to speak, sorry. And you can see that moving as well as I've gone. Remember if that doesn't show up after you've done that, it's a simple case of right clicking and show automation. You can also show all of the automation you've used, or you can hide the automation if you don't want to see the automation points because you've got a lot of tracks. I mean, you know it's working fine. You don't want to see that. You can hide that. So it's right click on the channel you're on, show automation or hide automation there to see it. Now, really quickly before I finish, under um, projects, you've got an automation panel. And what you can actually do under settings is you can actually change the amount of automation you're using. So if you're finding you've got too many um, automation points, you can actually move the amount. And then when you write, when you um, draw in auth automation lines, you'll actually get less. Can you see? Because you, you might find that you don't need it to be that thorough. You want them to be have less, um, more space between each automation editable point, which is quite useful for when you're doing curves and stuff like that. But likewise, if you find you want more, I generally do have quite a lot of uh, edit points. You go to project, um, or you go to your automation panel um, under settings, and you can bring this right down. So. The more you bring it down, the more actual points you're going to find when you draw this in, the more points you'll get to edit. So that's automation. It's really handy and it's good to mess about with. Good luck.